All right, here we're back, continuing with the heart. So, uh, we should know now the microscopic uh, cardiac physiology, cardiac cell, cardiac muscle. Um, we're getting now into a lot of the anatomy names and parts and things like that. So, uh, I start off here with a Valentine's Day heart. Um, Hope you know that the heart is it not actually that shape. I don't know what species that's supposed to represent, but um, again, I don't know where that image came from, but everybody recognizes that as a heart. Uh, but this is a lot more accurate. Yeah, this is the actual anatomy of the heart. I, I just don't know if that would do very well on a Valentine's Day card, something like that, right? Um, but we're gonna start to notice some of these important landmarks. Uh, if you remember like the lab of bones, each, each little bump, each ridge, each little hole, each, each little aspect of the heart had some biological purpose, some physiological uh, significance, right? Same thing here. So the anatomy of the heart is going to kind of show us some distinctions and, and again, these landmarks, these little valleys, these sulci. Uh, these these areas they're going to be significant as we continue on. So first, if you make a fist, uh, that's about the size of your heart, right? Approximately the size of your fist, uh, located in the mediastinum between the second rib and fifth intercostal space, right? So on the superior surface. So remember your vocabulary terms. So above, superior to the diaphragm, two thirds to the left of the midsternal line. So it's not necessarily right in the mid in the middle it's more lateral anterior to the vertebral column so in front of the vertebrae but posterior to the sternum so in between the sternum and the and the vertebral column uh, enclosed in a pericardium which is important peri think of a perimeter of the circle it goes all the way around the circle the pericardium it's a little pouch a little bag that surrounds the entire heart so we're gonna get into that pericardium here in a bit, but just kind of showing you the location of the heart. So um, here we've cut, we, we've moved the lungs away, we've cut the pericardium, that little pouch, and basically we see some major arteries, some major veins feeding into and out of the heart there. Um, want to kind of focus on this little point here. This is what we term as the apex, the point of the heart. The point of the heart is not pointing down, it's pointing laterally to the left side. So that's the anatomical position. If you remember the anatomical position, uh, that anatomical position, the heart apex pointing then to the left. Again, superior to the diaphragm, uh, posterior to the sternum, anterior to the uh, vertebrae. So the pericardium, right, we can get bogged down in a lot of vocabulary, a lot of terminology. I want you to kind of visualize the significance of this pouch, right? So we have a muscle that's beating, that never stops. Your whole life, this thing just continues and continues. So um, you can imagine all this beating would generate friction. Friction would start to irritate. Friction would start to generate heat. So to minimize the heat, uh, transfer heat accumulation we have this fluid we call pericardial fluid in the pericardial sac so this fluid basically helps to decrease friction uh, and it's important it's an important uh, anatomical aspect that surrounds the heart and again the parietal layer is going to be on the top visceral layer on the bottom i don't have a very good uh, analogy right now but if you can imagine a Walmart bag, an Albertsons bag, a Target bag, those little plastic bags. So uh, if I, not on the inside of the bag, but if I put it on the side and that bag wraps around the side of the heart um, and then there's that space between the two layers, right? So that space would then be filled with fluid. So the two spaces can kind of shift and slide and again, minimizing friction and heat. So again, you can see the, the, the sort of that situation there. So there's the myocardium, the actual heart muscle. 
And then we have this Walmart bag folded and that would be then fluid accumulated in there. So the pericardial cavity filled with the pericardial fluid and our different layers there. And um, again, uh, you're gonna figure out very quickly, I focus a lot more on the physiology. Yes, there's a lot of anatomy that's significant, but it's just names and people memorize names and they think they know everything. Uh, you have to understand the parts, what do they do? Yes, it's good to know the names, but I care more about that you understand the significance of the parts, the physiology. So if we just use some important uh, or, or, or common names, right? Epi, peri, right? Peri is going to be the, the surrounding. Epi is going to be the superficial, like an epidermis, uh, not skin, but in this case, epicardium, the upper layer of the, the heart. Myo refers to muscle. So the muscle of the heart. Um, so the pericardium, backtrack. So pericardium would be the sort of that, that layer of the, the outer layer of the heart, which is part of the pericardial uh, tissue there. Myocardium, this is the, the, the important part, right? So myocardium is muscle but it's not going to be long and, and parallel like the um, basically like, like skeletal muscle, right? This is a spiral type of bundle. And this is going to have great significance here that is spiral. So we have a fibrous skeleton of the heart. It crisscrosses interlaying layer of the connective tissue. So all of this fibrous skeleton helps to anchor, support the great vessels and valves, and limits the spread of action potentials to specific paths. This is gonna mean something a little bit later, right? Now it's just uh, introductory stuff. So if we look here at the, those spiral bundles, right? This to me is very, very significant and it shows us what the heart is trying to do. If we go back to development, to early development, embryonic development. So at day 20, so we're at day 20. We already have a, a functional little beating heart, but not just one, we have two actually. So there are two parallel little hearts and their job is to beat. So about day 22, those two separate hearts fuse into one. So now we have a single heart, but comprised in of four separate little chambers. Uh, by day 24, day 28 and by day 35. So on the 35th day of our life, our heart has already undergone this spiraling, this torsion basically. So what it looks like, if we look at the myocardium, the muscle is not just parallel. That muscle has now wrapped around these different hollow areas that we're gonna call the, the, the hollow atria or the hollow ventricles. So my best analogy I can give you here, why would the heart do this, right? Think of um, a tube of toothpaste, right? Um, what's the best way to get toothpaste out if we squeeze all the way around, right? Yes, we can get it by maybe pressing on one side and kind of pressing forward, we can get toothpaste out, but I don't think that's very efficient. If you squeeze the toothpaste, you squeeze is gonna move in, in, in you know, opposite directions. Now. If I squeeze from the middle, I'm gonna to move toothpaste out, but I'm gonna also move toothpaste back. Well, that wouldn't be very efficient for the heart. The heart wants to move blood out. So the contractions, this sort of torsion, this figure eight sort of bear hug type of situation is gonna begin at the bottom. So our contraction will start here at the bottom. Once we contract, once we contract, once we contract, then we're gonna force blood out. So I'm talking ventricular contractions, right? I'm gonna to get to this a little bit later, but our first contractions will, will actually be atrial contractions that move blood into the ventricles and then ventricular contraction moving blood out of the vessels. And I'll get into all the specifics, details and things, but I just want you to, to have that visual picture of what the heart is trying to do. It's, it's, it's beating in a, in a circular kind of, you know, twisting, Kind of like if you're going to rinse out a, a wet napkin or a wet the towel or something, right? It's that, that twisting and that generates more force, more efficiency, 
and a better drainage of the blood out. So important, 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 this spiral bundle of cardiac muscle cells. So um, endocardium, that's basically the, the tissue on the inside. I don't know if I have a picture here. Yeah, so we have the, the important part, what actually does work is the myocardium. What is attached then to that pericardial sac would be the epicardium. And then what lines the inside where, where the blood is actually gonna be flowing and bumping, that's gonna be what we call the endocardium inside the inside tissue, the muscular tissue, and then the outer tissue there. Uh, I hinted on this a little bit, but now we get into our chambers, right? So the heart itself is gonna be comprised of four chambers, right? Two atria, or a single atrium, a plural atria. And these two atria, if you know what an atrium means, you go to a big fancy you know, building, a big fancy, you know, a hotel or something, that welcoming place when you enter, that's turned as an atrium. So this atrium is sort of welcoming the blood into the heart. So we have two atria, a left atria and a right atria. And they're going to be separated internally by the interatrial septum. So septum is like a wall. Like think of the septum that separates your, your two nostrils there, right? So where is this septum? Inter atrial between the atria so separating the right atria from the left atria uh, we're going to have a coronary sulcus a groove right coronary sulcus or groove um, that encircles the junction of the atria and the ventricles okay so okay what, what are you talking about here right so uh Coronary is okay. I, I use that term often, but I also like this term a little bit better. So atrioventricular. It gives us a better idea of what we're talking about. So we're separating the atria on the top, the superior aspect, from the ventricles on the inferior aspect. So it's a groove that separates the atria from the ventricles. So we call that the atrioventricular groove. Um, the term is used a lot to um, you know, we, we think of Corona now as a virus, right? But before that, a Corona referred to a crown or a beer, maybe, I don't know, but, but the crown, right? So uh, we have Corona, the, it would sort of encircle, it would, it would go around in the person's head and fit it as a crown. So coronary sulcus is this, this groove that goes all the way around sort of this superior part of the heart. Right. Sulcus means the same thing as groove. If it's a uh, one, it's a sulcus. If it's plural, it's a sulci, S-U-L-C-I. So within the atria, we're going to have these little auricles, kind of like little ear flaps. If you've seen those little like uh, lumberjack hats or Chavo de Locho hats that have these little ear flaps, these little uh, flaps that, that, that hang down, they're like auricles. They're going to increase the volume of blood that can then fit in that atria. All right, so those are the superior chambers. Now we drop to the inferior chambers. They're bigger, right? We have two ventricles separated by the interventricular septum, that wall between the two ventricles, and the anterior and posterior interventricular sulci mark the position of the septum externally. Whew, right. So what does that mean? So we can tell where the septum is without dissecting the heart. Right? We, we can, we can kind of gauge where that septum is in the inside by looking at the anterior and posterior interventricular sulci. So that groove on the outside of the heart will kind of give us an insight to where that, uh, that septum is internally. Again, all these words, maybe you can make sense of them. I'm the person or the type of person that uh, basically needs pictures. I need to see images, right? And that helps me a lot more than just words. So may maybe that, that works for you. But uh, here we have a heart with a lot of names and sort of parts thrown your way. But let's try to make sense of what we can see, right? First, my first question would be, are we looking at the front of the heart or the back of the heart? And, and, and how would we know, right? So what do we look for? We look for the apex. 
the apex should be pointing to the left. So now you know you're looking at then the right side of the heart. Over here, the right side of the heart, and then the left side of the heart over here. Uh, let's start off with our atrium. So here's our right atrium. You see the auricle of the right atrium. And then this would be our left atrium. Now what separates the atria from the ventricles would be the coronary sulcus, also known as the atrioventricular groove. Right? And why do we have a groove? What would be the biological significance of having a little, a little ditch, a little groove? Well, it makes very logical sense that that would be a nice place to put down some blood vessels. So this, uh, these coronary arteries fit very nicely within that coronary sulcus. Again, goes all the way around to the back of the heart. So now we're looking at the ventricles. So here we have our right ventricle and our left ventricle. And these ventricles are gonna be separated internally by the interventricular septum. We can't see that from this view, but we know that that interventricular septum is right here, deep to this. This is our interventricular sulcus or interventricular groove, right? So the anterior interventricular uh, sulcus right there. And why that little valley, that little groove? Because that's where these major vessels are gonna be kind of sitting in. So again, important landmarks for the heart. We're gonna deal with these uh, major vessels in a bit, um, but just trying to get a, a sort of a, a visualization of, of the heart and, and its major parts here. So the atria we talked about right now are um, receiving chambers, they receive blood, right? And they're gonna receive blood from three major vessels. The superior vena cava, superior coming from the, the top, the inferior vena cava coming from the bottom, and the coronary sinus, right? The coronary sinus uh, is gonna be coming from the back. Uh, vessels entering the left atrium, right? So this is coming into the right atrium, and here we're looking at the left atrium, right? The right and left pulmonary veins. So uh, we're gonna have a whole chapter a little bit later on vessels, but for now, let's just understand that arteries are gonna carry blood away from the heart and veins are gonna carry blood to the heart. In Spanish, if you say to somebody, ven, uh, come over here, ven acá, right? Uh, ven implies to, you know, to draw near, to come this way. So if I'm talking about pulmonary veins, veins are gonna be bringing blood back to the heart. Vein, vena, vein, vena, these are gonna be bringing blood back to the heart, right? To the right atrium and then to the left atrium. So let me back up here. So here we have the right atrium receiving blood from here, this big vessel, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava here, right? So that's where that, the, the coronary sulcus or coronary sinus is not viewed at this point. Uh, these little arteries here, or I should say these little veins here, the pulmonary veins are coming into the left, pulmonary veins coming into the left uh, atrium, right? See, my little dog keeps snoring here. Let me get him that. Let's go. So we're looking now at the, Okay, atria, now we're looking at the ventricles. So ventricles are now gonna push blood out, right? So major vessels leaving the right ventricle are the pulmonary trunk, and major vessels leaving the left ventricle are the aorta. So backing up. So this is kind of coming from the posterior side, uh, but we'll, we leave through the pulmonary trunk from the right side, and we leave through the aorta from the left side, right there. Um, papillary muscles project into ventricular cavities. We'll talk about those when we talk about the actual valves. And the trabeculae carniae, these are just the texture, right? This is the texture of that endocardium. Uh, and I'll show you a picture of what they look like in a bit. So now what we've done, we've cut the anterior part of the heart out, right? So now we can see inside and we look for, again, our major landmarks, our apex. 
So left side, we know we have our right atrium, our left atrium, our right ventricle, and our left ventricle. So feeding blood into the right atrium, we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And from the posterior side, again, the coronary sinus. Bringing blood into the left atrium, we have the pulmonary veins, uh, the left pulmonary, pulmonary veins, and then the right pulmonary veins. As we progress to the ventricle, we're going to pass through a valve, and I'll specifically you know, talk about the valves shortly, but we have the valve that separates our atrium from our ventricle. So we're going to call these atrioventricular valves. It's going to have multiple names, right? So the right AV valve, also known as the tricuspid valve, separates right atrium from right ventricle. The, on the left side, we have the left atrioventricular valve, also known as the bicuspid valve, or an old name also known as the mitral valve. Um, a mitre was that hat that the old, like, bishops used to wear they have like two two little flaps so bicuspid two flaps on the left and tricuspid three flaps on the right so we're in our ventricles now and if you notice that texture i always like to think of this as like freddy krueger face I and mean, if you're a fan of freddy krueger scary movie stuff his face is all like burned and, and that's what the inside of the heart looks like it's got that freddy krueger texture and we call that texture trabeculae carniae. So that's all the in, on the inside, the myocardial sort of wall of the heart. Uh, these little sort of muscles, these are what we're going to call the papillary muscles. They're like little papillary refers to a little nipple. It's like a little nipple-shaped muscle that basically attaches to and anchors actually the valves here, right? So we'll talk about these chordae tendinae. Uh, are the little cords, think of them as like little tendons that are holding the valve. Uh, they attach to the papillary muscles, uh, trabeculae, carniae, the texture of the endocardium. Uh, here we have the thick muscular layer that we call the interventricular septum, separates the right from the left ventricles. And basically that's, again, a lot of stuff thrown your way. Uh, you're going to have to kind of sit there and focus and uh, analyze and soak all that in. But again, all of these parts will be fair game for an exam. So let me stop it there so it doesn't get too much bigger. Then I'm going to walk through blood flow through the heart, right? So our two pulmonary and then systemic circuits here.